What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and today I'm going to be taking a look at a new prototyping tool called Mockup. Mockup is supposed to be a great solution for those of you that want to do really complex animations and interactions. Not just screen to screen stuff, but the fancy stuff. I know you, you like to get crazy. Okay, so jumping right into the computer, you can download Mockup by going to mockup.me. That's the site right here. And it has some tutorials, documentation, some support stuff, and the magical download button. Once we've downloaded and installed Mockup, all we have to do is actually open it up on our computer and you can see there it is. I'm just gonna full screen it so we can see kind of everything that we're doing. All right, I'm gonna open up my design that I made in Sketch. And I was thinking for this tutorial, we would just do this surfing site that I made and we would want to somehow click here and transition over to this kind of like different page. So it would kind of be like uh, without loading a new page, it could kind of transition things in and out and I'd want to show that. So um, somehow, some way, we're going to want to get our sketch document into mockup. But I'm going to go up and I'm going to sync with sketch. When I do that, it says, how do we want to sync? We want to go import things at 3x. Do I want to rasterize the text? No. Only the selected artboards. Resize artboards, no. Do I have both artboards selected? Okay, so both are selected, so that's interesting. And then you press sync, and it's gonna go ahead and do its magic. I'm seeing some real differences here as far as um, our typography goes. So, oh, it just turned bold on. Why did it turn bold on? So, okay. The sketch import is less than perfect. It could probably use a little bit of work, but you'll notice at least it has completely respected all my groupings in sketch. Um, so the artboard name and all the groupings. So what we want to do is we want to do some basic animation from A to B. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna zoom out just by pressing command minus on the keyboard. You can zoom in and out. You can also hold down space and drag around the kind of canvas area um, to kind of navigate. So I'm gonna take my surfing artboard, I'm gonna press Command C and Command V and paste a new version of the artboard out there. So now we have surfing one and we have surfing two. And I'm going to um, just zoom in and make some changes, kind of try to change things up to be how it is over here. to do now a basic animation okay so I'm gonna say if we click anywhere on here or maybe we should get specific and go with the link and I'm gonna click the little plus that comes up next to the element now you'll see if I just zoom in I'm gonna get let me do that again when I zoom in so I'm on an element I press the plus I can now choose any of these kind of default um, actions that could take place like a press or release or click um, dragging begin or dragging end, um, scrolling, hovering, all those kinds of things. So I'm gonna do a click and you actually have to press and hold and drag to the artboard you wanna go to. So okay, we've created an animation there. Now we need to add some customized animation and that's where our timeline comes in. To bring up the timeline, you just click on the play arrow in between any of the two artboards or any of the transitions that you've made from screen to screen and you get your timeline and you can bring your timeline up you can drag the whole thing up so you can see all the different elements that are involved in it and we can just bring this down and let's hide our preview for now so now right here in the same we didn't have to go out to any sort of other area it's all right here um, and we can click on an element um, I'm thinking like here like other popular tours and it will, we can change the timing of this, okay? So we can not only change the timing by, by dragging out the node or delaying it by dragging out, you know, you know the, the entire section itself, but we can also, um, we can also change the, the different modes of easing. So it's on default right now, but we can do it with like an ease in, ease out, which is gonna make it fast in the beginning, fast at the end, but kind of slow, kind of like accelerates um, as it lands in and out. Um, and 
you know, we can just drag this out all the way. Let's see. So it has the opacity and it has the Y position of this group that's here. Now, if we were to preview it, and let's just get a bit of a bigger preview. Um, when we click on here, let's see what we get. It's slower, seeing the whole thing is slow and it's all, all when it's moving itself out. So we don't want it to be that slow. Let's bring it back in. I do like the ease in, ease out that's on that. So um, now we're just gonna play with the timing and I'll fast forward through and we'll see what kind of cool custom animation we can get out of this. If you wanted to make this uh, artboard scrollable, we just have to take all the contents of the artboard, press Command G and group them together, and then just make sure that they're scrollable on the vertical axis. We can then take that scroll group and just shorten it up. And so you can see uh, if we just release it here. Now, if we come over to our preview, we can scroll a little bit inside of our, it's a little bit jittery and I, I don't quite know why. Um, I'm wondering if these interactable things have anything to do with it. No, it's just a little bit jittery, isn't it? If I drag and scroll, that's kind of okay. It even has kind of the natural bounce to it when I do that. So, um, okay, that works, that's nice. Okay, so I'm having a little bit of a problem where my um, I've created these groups and I, I, had, I had actual like links like these guys right here, and they disappeared. I don't know how to get them back. I'm pressing the transition button here, and I can't get them like that. I'm also, yeah, I just can't find them. So I'm creating new ones, I guess, on click, dragging over. And I guess, wow, there's my whole animation that I programmed. I don't know why it disappeared though. That's very funky to me. So, okay, let's go back here and just on click, back, and sure enough, there it is. So now, now we get, our different animations back and forth. Okay, it's kind of nice. So now we want to utilize uh, the bindings that are inside of Mockup to create some interesting kind of interaction. Uh, and a way we might want to do that is we might want to bind what happens on the screen to how we scroll. So to create a binding, you actually have to grab one of the scrollable areas. So you can see our group here, that's the actual scrollable area, so we're gonna hit binding. And when we do that, we get a new timeline from the bottom, okay? So we can kind of pull this up. This timeline is a little bit different because it has to do with scroll position. You're binding things to the scroll position. And you can see as I kind of scrub through this timeline, it's showing the different scrollable positions, okay? so. Um, we can just get it back Ooh, over to 100. It's a little bit interesting, but we have, we're back to our zero mark right there. So we want to say, hey, when we start scrolling, how about we do something right over here at about 100 pixels, or maybe we'll go a little bit further, maybe 200 pixels vertical scroll distance, okay? What we want to do is we want to take this photo and we want to kind of like move it up. And you'll see once we do that, we get the photo and its Y position has been changed, okay? We also wanna take the gradient. Where's our gradient? We're gonna, oh, we're on the wrong, that's surfing one. Where's gradient in here? Gradient in here. And we want to bring its opacity up. So let's just drag opacity to 100% and then we'll take gradient and we will Maybe we don't want the surfing picture to be that high up. Maybe we want to, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe we want that photo, where'd our photo go? Photo to be back down just a little bit, okay? So now you can see as we're scrolling, we're getting kind of like a parallax effect where we're scrolling, the, the photo's scrolling up and it's starting to fade out, it looks like, at the very, very bottom. Okay, so we're at 200. Let's grab our gradient and take it a little bit further. Okay, great. So now you can see we're scrolling, 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 and perfect. So it's just kind of like a parallax effect as it scrolls up the page. Now we exit and we preview, and when I'm scrolling, it takes off just like that. 
Last thing I think maybe I want to do is I want to give our our um, our logo maybe like a little bit of interactivity. So I'm going to take the logo, I'm going to select it here, the, the shape or just the entire logo thing here. I'm going to create a symbol out of it and we'll call this logo. We're going to create the symbol and I'm pretty sure by double tap when we go into the symbol, um, in the symbol editing mode, okay, um, where I can take this. I'm just going to copy it and create another version of our of our symbol, okay? And we want to create like a hover state. So let's do a hover state. Um, maybe, just maybe, we want to take our artboard and give it a little bit more width, okay? And maybe this one will just push over like that. I don't know. Let's try it. Um, again, they're not interactable. I'm gonna say hover in goes to here and I'll click on this artboard and say hover out goes to here. There's just like a nice little interaction there for our icon. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and software reviews just like this one, so stick around. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and check the links for any helpful descriptions I might have mentioned in the video. I hope you guys are having an amazing week designing amazing stuff, making amazing stuff, and finding the right tools for the job.